Welcome to another video from Robotic Mower Services. This is another video in our series of videos about how to um, how to diagnose a no loop error. Um, I got my my helper here who is apparently protesting and just laying down on a job. Uh, we got a 300 series charging station here. Got the black boundary wire coming out around and uh, have a green guide wire going out through to kind of differentiate it for you. And you can see I cut the boundary wire over here on this side, right here to obviously replicate, you know, having a broken boundary wire uh, in your loop system. So what I want to show you is uh, what happens when you swap a guide wire with a boundary wire to try to narrow down where your, your bad spot in your wire might be that's causing your no loop error. Um, this will work if you have if you have a good guide wire, which you have to make sure of that first, and you only have a bad spot on one side of your boundary system. Um, what you want to do here is you have obviously your, your boundary wire is going around, or like I said, your guide wire going out. So what you want to do is you want to come to the back of your charging station and you want to take your guide wire and you want to you want to pull off of one of the boundary wires off the back here and then put your guide wire on in place of that boundary wire. So I moved the guide wire over here to this side. So that means I've just eliminated this wire on this side from the system. So now the guide wire going out through the guide wire there, the green wire, that is actually our boundary wire for this side. <clears throat> so the, the power is going to be traveling through the guide wire and then back around this boundary wire because that's the one plugged in on the other side. Obviously because there's a cut in the wire we're gonna have a flashing blue light yet. So we know we have a flashing blue light over there. Next thing we'll do is we'll move our guide wire over to this side. We'll disconnect the boundary wire for this side over here. Move our guide wire over there to that tab and connect this boundary wire back up. And now we have our power, our signal going out, our, our guide wire and around the boundary wire. And the guide wire is acting like the boundary for that side over there. So we just, we created a whole new circuit there, a whole new loop. Same thing we did before over here. We created a loop over here, just this section. Now we got a loop with just this section. If we get a green solid light, we know that everything from our guide wire back around our boundary wire to the charging station on this side is good. So we know that now where our guide wire connects into our boundary wire from there back around on this side somewhere over in there is our bad spot or bad spots. It's not going to tell you if there's one, it's not going to tell you if there's multiple, it's not going to tell you if it's a clean cut or just high resistance, but it's going to help you narrow it down. If you had multiple guide wires going out through here, you have a 400 series mower, you could actually take and do the same process and then you could use the second guide wire and go back through and do the same process to narrow it down more, making different sections. Then you could also do, if you had two guide wires, you could do a guide wire for the boundary on this side and a guide wire connected for the boundary on the other side. And then your, your signal would be traveling out the guide wire through that section of boundary wire between that guide wire that you have hooked up for this side now and the guide wire you have coming back through this way. So it would create another section just in the middle of the, the working area there that it would be testing for you. Um, <clears throat> it, it's really a, a simple process. Uh, once you get the hang of it, you know, people are swapping stuff around and are like, well, I got a green light, but you know, where does that tell me that my, my brake is at? Well, you have to know what wires you're swapping around. You know, number one, you have to know where your guide wires go. So if you don't have any idea where your guide wire goes, then you don't have any idea where your, you know, if this side over here, if everything is good, but you don't know where that guide wire connects in at, you don't know how far out this side to go knowing that this is good. You don't know where to start looking, going around this way because you don't know where your guide wire is at. Um, simple systems with one guide wire, 300 series, a 115H. You know, it's not too bad because usually they're not a, a huge boundary system like the 400 series mowers have, you know, because they're covering a lot more area. But that's a nice thing with the 400 series mowers. If you have your multiple guide wires connected, then you keep breaking down the different sections. 
And we do this quite a bit, you know, because it's going to help us decide, okay, do we go over here and look, or do we go over here and look, you know, which, which side are we going to hook our tester up on to get to the brake the fastest? Um, again, if, if you use the, uh, the resistance test like we showed you in our one previous video, you're going to be able to tell this too. You're going to be able to narrow it down between, you know, this boundary wire and a guide wire, this boundary wire and a guide wire and all that stuff. But like I said, for anybody that doesn't have a multimeter, anybody that's unsure how to do that stuff, this is going to be the quickest way to try to narrow it down. So hopefully your brake is only on one side and one section and not on both sides. And um, you can figure out what side it's on, go out there and walk around and say, okay, yeah, look, Somebody drove a bulldozer through my yard. That's probably where the cable snapped or the volcano in the backyard spewed lava out and burnt through the cable or whatever, you know. You might get lucky. You never know. So it's worth a try uh, before you call the dealer to come out just to do that quick little test there. Walk around, see if you find any damage or anything or obvious signs of it. And uh, maybe get it fixed up on your own. So um, if you're unsure about how to diagnose these loop signal errors you know check back through our other videos we have we have a whole series on these and we're gonna have even more coming out later on so you want to make sure to subscribe to this channel if you are in the market for an automower automower parts automower accessories or anything like that check out our website www.roboticmowerservices.com if you're looking for tech support or anything like that you can reach us through our website or you can send us an email roboticmowerservices at gmail.com also, if you're looking for parts or accessories or anything like that for your automower and you don't see them listed on our website for sale, shoot us an email and say, hey, this is the model I got, my serial number, and this is what I'm looking for, and we'll do the best we can to help you out. So that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and again, make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any of our future videos about how to solve these loop errors and... Um, to see if my helper actually gets up and does something in the future. <laughs> so, that's it. Thanks for watching. Come on, Stan. Get up. Come on. Come on. Let's go.